Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to uh, create a game, or a, a very simple game, in Blender 2.60. So, um, yeah, let's just get straight into it then. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, just use this cube as the thing that we're going to control in our game. So press GZ1, and now bring it on top of the grid. And uh, we're going to use the grid as the floor. So the best way to do that then is to press Shift A, uh, under mesh, choose plane, and then um, you've now added a plane. Now, if you press S8, it'll make it eight times as big, which fills up this grid like so. Now, uh, I'm just going to make the cube red uh, in the materials, just to um, what do you call it? Just to uh, make sure that uh, it's very clear um, where the cube is, just for you know benefits of the video. Um, so now it's time to actually add some controls. So first of all, uh, at the top where it says Blender Render, you want to use Blender Game, and I'm not sure if that's something in the user preferences. Um, render... No, it's not. Okay. Uh, so your Blender Game thing should just be right at this top bit here. And one of the big uh, noticeable differences is the physics uh, panel has changed a lot. So from Blender Render, where you have all these uh, simulations you uh, in Blender game, uh, you've only got things like this. So I'm going to be covering what some of these do uh, in this tutorial. So, on with actually doing something. If you uh, come to the top up here where it says default, just to the left you can, uh, if you click on this, a little drop down will appear. And you can choose game logic, or if you want to be fancy, you can just press control right on the uh, arrow thing. Um, Okay, and this will take you to a very advanced game, uh, or potentially advanced game setup thing. You've got your game properties, your logic editor down here, your properties here. Uh, if you want to do any scripting or coding or whatever you want to call it, uh, you c that can be done here. And you've also got your outliner along here to make it easier to select objects. So, um, things we don't need is the outliner. I never use that really, uh, in things like this anyway. And since we're not going to be doing any scripting, let's just get rid of that text editor, and we may as well just uh, bring the properties back to its original place. Uh, so it's pretty much the exact same as the um, original, uh, you know, thing. As you can see, we could have just dragged up the timeline and changed it to a logic editor. But I'm just did that. I just explained this just to show you that this is an option. So. Uh, to make this cube do something, uh, what we need to do is, let me just explain to you what this logic edi editor down here does. Um, basically, we've got sensors, controllers, and actuators. The sensor is basically the trigger, so what triggers uh, th this cube to do something, um, which is the actuator. The controller is basically controlling what sensors do what. For example, let's say... I've got a sensor in it. So in fact, let's just make one. Add sensor, uh, keyboard, and the key. If we just scroll down here, just zoom out might help. Um, yeah. So the key is W. So just click on this bit and then hit W. And uh, what that's doing is setting this key to W. So as soon as you press W, it will do whatever you know you tell it to. Um, so just minimize this now, or collapse it, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so let's say that there's a whole lot of things, like maybe if I want to press shift at the same time, then maybe like, because W is going to make it move, uh, if I hold shift, maybe we'll make it go faster. I might actually uh, explain that to you as well, just to tell you about that. Um, so yeah, okay. So that's uh, the key W, but Blender doesn't know exactly what you want to do with it, so this is where the controller comes in. So add controller and, and all we have to do is just put in the keyboard thing into the uh, and thing here, then add an actuator motion, and then let's make it go on the y axis by one. So now if we link this up again here, we're in press P, press W, whoop, too fast I think, point one, press W, it now goes nice and slowly. Uh, into the direction you want it to go in. So, uh, that's nice like that, but if I let's just set that to something even small. So, point zero 0.02, so now it's going tediously slow. This is where the fun shift thing comes in. 
add sensor, shift, which is, oh no, keyboard, sorry. Then, in the key thing, press shift, and, um, yep, that's all we need to do for that. So then we're going to add another controller, which is going to be and. So let's just uh, keep things organized and name these, so this will be W, uh, this will be shift, um, just call it that. Um, yeah, and this is going to be the controller, so in goes shift, and, oops, hang on, there we go, and also in goes the W. So now this is basically saying that if W and shift are pressed, then this motion will happen or whatever. So let's just um, add another actuator uh, motion, which is there, and let's just make it go at point yeah, um, yeah, point one on the Y axis, just like that. And uh, one thing that I noticed is that this is probably the uh, if we were to press P now, go forwards, TDC slow, forwards, hold shift, it does do that, so uh, that should be fine. But uh, y this is sort of like um, a lot of other softwares where layers really matter, so you want to bring the motion on top of this one. Stuff like that, but it seems it's worked without needing to do that, so that should be fine. Alright then, so, um, yeah, that's just how that works. So, let's just add the rest of the controls. So, a uh, keyboard in the sensor thing. Uh, oops, let's just minimize that. Um, key, uh, A, it's going to turn left. In fact, no, let's do S so it goes backwards. Just simple, uh, organized, really. Uh, add an AND controller like that, then add an actuator, uh, motion, where is it, uh, there it is, and, um, yeah, let's just change the location to minus point one, in fact, in fact, yeah, minus point, no, yeah, minus point one, uh, I'm just, I was wondering if we should bother with that whole shift thing again, but I thought, nah, because, You've already learnt it, so, you know, you can do it if you want, but it's not anything I'm going to do. Okay, so just make sure that key works, it does, and, yeah. So, okay, I just thought, actually, maybe we just should swap this around, so make this point two, and, uh, make this one, uh, point zero two, make this point one, like that. And in this one, what's this again? Ah, right, yeah, that's fine. So now, because it's just a bit annoying with all this stuff, you're going to press shift and then... Oh, now bring this on top. Okay. Something weird's happening, so that's this one. Do, do, do. Hold shift and then... Um... Okay, just never mind that. Uh... Yeah, we can hold shift and it goes faster, that's fine. Um, so yeah, let's just redo this again. Sorry about this. That's point one, and that's point zero two. Alright then, so, uh, we've now got forwards and backwards working fine. So, add another sensor, keyboard, and just bring that back there. Uh, with the keyboard, we can set the key to A, and this will turn it left. Uh, so it's just bring this up a bit, because we're sort of running out of space, let me just zoom out as well. Uh, add a controller, and bring it in there. Add actuator motion, and this time we're going to use the rotation, oh, I forgot to mention, the column on the left is the x-axis, column in the middle, the y-axis, and on the right is the z-axis, uh, yeah. So um, with this we're going to want to rotate it on the z, uh, z or z axis. Um, and this would be by minus point two, I think would be. Uh, oh, hang on, did I forget to set the key? Oh no, I forgot to link it up here. That's what the problem is. And then, oh, that's going the wrong way, and it's going way too slow. So point five. Got to be careful though, because rotations usually work on a much quicker way. So, um, in fact, you know, let's just set it at one. Probably. Ah, in fact, yeah, that's fine. Maybe a bit too slow. So, three. 
And now, okay. Yep, that's working fine. Uh, let's just name these again. So this will be uh, W Shift S, and then this will be uh, A, like that. And yep, that's fine. Add another sensor. This should be the last one. Uh, this being the D key. And then we can zoom in again. Uh, add controller. Uh, and there we go. Just plug that in there. And um, add another actuator. Motion. And rotation on the uh, Z axis being minus 3. I think that is the correct one. So, uh, yep, that's fine. Okay, so now we've got this cube walking around, or just generally moving. But if it goes off the edge, there's a reason why we have this floor here, it's to keep it balanced. So, uh, we should have it falling. So what we do, is there are two ways to do this. In um, this bit, the physics panel, just drag this down, we've done everything we need to do here. Uh, we can change it from static to dynamic or rigid body. Now let me show you the difference. Dynamic, if you press P, you just go forwards and then it will literally just drop like that. If we change it to rigid body, then it will literally tip off the edge. At a, so there we go, it's tipped. So, um, yeah, that's what the difference is. Now, although rigid body looks better, if you're making a game, it's probably best to do it dynamic, simply because, um, you know, you can add in some scripts and stuff, because, um, you know, it can also be quite annoying when, uh, let's say I add a jump feature to this cube, um, you know, when it lands, sometimes it can topple over if you try and move around while you're in the air, and, uh, yeah, so if you said it's too dynamic, that can't happen, and that's where uh, scripting comes involved, game engines, physics engines, all that stuff. Uh, in fact, game engine is probably a stupid mention, but physics engines, uh, that's where that sort of stuff comes in to finish off the job. Um, so, that's why we're going to leave it at dynamic. However, something that I uh, didn't uh, tick was the collision bounds being box, because, let's just see, in fact, let's just turn it back onto rigid body, just so that you can see the difference, if I just go slowly towards the edge as you can see yeah, well last time it sort of passed through the edge a bit um, sort of overlapped, so that's what happens if you uh, tick the bounds and make sure if you've got a sphere, you set it to a sphere, stuff like that um, but yeah so that's what that does, obstacles uh, I'm not going to go into that stage yet so, um, that's that on how to create a game. Uh, if you want to export it as an executable uh, file, then as much as I don't want to disappoint you, I found that there are a few bugs with it, uh, you know. Uh, I, I don't know if it's just me, but uh, when I tried it, it wouldn't work. In fact, let me just prove it to you. Let's just move our camera over here, bring it up like that, and then uh, go to File, User Preferences, and then if you uh, go to Save, like this, Capitals, just one capital S, no, no, don't even do that. Oh, hang on. Oh yeah, under All, um, you can tick that box, and uh, you can then save it by going to ex uh, File, Export, um, it's just quickly go into this and file export again and then uh, x3d oh no, hang on, where's my... oh yeah, save as game engine runtime uh, desktop uh, let's just make a new folder called game because it creates a whole ton of files everywhere game and just call it, you know, game in the thing there and save and it will just do its work, leave it to do that uh, if it's not really doing much from what you can see, don't worry, it's supposed to do that. It's just creating a ton of files in this one little folder that we made. And, uh, you know, it should all generally work after... Oh, here we go. Working now. What well, it should be. So, let's just try and open this up. Maybe it's going to work on me suddenly, but I doubt that. It doesn't work the other times. Here we go. Oh, big problem. 
Uh, so yeah, it's probably just a small bug, but it can be fixed. I'm sure there's like some plugins or whatever that can help you fix that problem. But um, you get the idea. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. This has been Whitehead King teaching how to make a simple game in Blender 2.6. Um, yeah, so that's it. Comment, rate, subscribe. Visit my website. Follow me on Twitter. Do all that stuff. Check out my channel as well. I could really do with some more views um, on some of my videos. Um, so yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching and goodbye.